Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. And we've got a good one for you today. And I know I say this every time, but it's true, for a number of reasons. First, and probably very obviously because of the results that Mega Ray TV Lover 1 here is going to achieve, but also this battle isn't over in six minutes, the way most World of Tanks battles tend to be these days. Which is doubly surprising because this is the Mines map, and battles on this map are usually over very, very quickly. It's not a big map. The machine that he's driving is the Italian M43 Basotto Tier 6 tank destroyer. You can basically think of this thing... Oh, thank you for the turn assist there, Hellcat. I'm sure that was totally intentional. But yes, you can basically think of this thing as a sort of Tier 6 Italian Stug. Except with a bigger gun. And with APCR ammunition as standard. Well, that's assuming you choose this gun, of course. The uh, the 120 slash 40, which has three times the alpha damage of the stock 75 mm gun. This thing does 360 average damage per shot. There is a bigger gun, but it's a bit of a derp, and it's not bad as derp guns go. Things are starting to get a little bit hot around this bush. There's an excellent chance that he's going to catch a stray shell aimed at uh, all the tanks driving around him that were getting spanked there. Plus, he had no targets to shoot at. But yeah, the derp gun on this thing has four times the alpha damage of the stock 75mm gun. 440 damage with the high explosive shells. And the high explosive shells also have 105mm of high explosive penetration. I mean, that wouldn't look out of place on a tier 10 tank fire high explosive. But this gun is probably your best choice. It's not particularly accurate, in fact it's fairly inaccurate, but the aiming time's decent, the reload isn't bad, the DPM's actually pretty good, and the alpha damage... Yeah, that will do. The gun handling overall is pretty bad though, and it only has 5 degrees of gun depression, but it's probably your best choice. The mobility on the machine is... It's all right. It's got very good reverse speed though for getting out of trouble, which you're going to need because when your concealment fails you, which shouldn't happen too often unless you're being careless because I think this thing actually has best-in-class stationary concealment even when firing amongst all the tier 6 tank destroyers, but when you do get spotted, your armour is not going to save you. I mean, the frontal armour might, maybe, mitigate some high explosive shell damage, but you absolutely shouldn't count on it. And all the piercing shells are going to go through this thing like a hot knife through butter. So anyway, machine description out of the way. What's going on? Well, the team are ahead by one kill, and they have managed to take the hill. Unfortunately, most of those enemy tank destroyers basically haven't moved from their base. They're on that little hill just next to their cap circle, and they're tearing up all of the friendly tanks on the hill who are being proximity spotted by that Polak tank on the minimap there at the northern end of the hill. Which is a particular problem for the AMX-12-2 that he's sitting right next to, who didn't appear to be able to take the hint and has in fact just been taken out. The enemy also had somebody on this island. Probably more than one, actually. There's a T1 Heavy and a Type 64 who managed to get around here, and the spotting from the Type 64 has been particularly troublesome for the Excalibur over there, who is hanging on by the skin of his teeth and is definitely going to die the next time somebody sees him. There does seem to be an opportunity to get up on the hill here, though. Cover's being... cover? Corner is being covered. No, English is hard by the KV-2 over there. The team have just lost another tank. There goes the Excalibur. We couldn't take the hint either. Ironically, for the light tanks on the enemy team, in particular the Type 64 down in the... Uh, oh, there, there goes another one. <laughs> it's the Polak tank, the heavy. who seems to be getting all of the spotting just by virtue of sticking his face up here and proximity detecting everyone. You really, really, really should have probably pulled back from the bushes, but there it is. Yeah. That was a bit of a misplay. Should have really pulled back from the bushes there before taking the shot. I mean, he got the kill, which was nice. Although, to be completely fair, with the diabolically bad 5 degrees of gun depression on this thing, if he hadn't been poking right up over the edge of the cliff there, he might not have been able to take the shot. So, he possibly didn't really have any choice. But he did get the kill, and he did survive, although he's lost almost half of his health in a single hit from the enemy ARL. 
And the team have gone ahead again, taking out the Flat Panzer, but then the team once again equalised. This battle really was very, well, even, neck and neck, right up until the point where it isn't. <laughs> and, uh, don't worry, it's coming. And the team have gone ahead again. Right, with the enemy Paulak tank now spotting the corner, which is going to be a problem for the KV-2 and the M4, he's no longer proximately spotting anybody sticking their nose out over here, so Mega ATV Mother comes over in the well, hope of maybe seeing some of the tank destroyers that are infesting that hill over there. Meanwhile, good news for the defenders on the eastern flank. The enemy Type 64 has been nailed. The teams are once again even on kills, and then the Paulak tank takes a massive hit, probably from the KV-2. Can they finish him off? No, he kills the Jackson instead, once again, taking the enemy team ahead on point. But the enemy Basotto got spotted while taking a shot there, and once again, even Stevens, seven kills apiece, and this time, the ATV lover wastes no time in pulling back. There's another exchange of kills. Both teams are now on eight kills apiece. And those tank destroyers on the hill are starting to get spotted as they give their positions away while butchering further tanks on Mega ATV Lovers' team. The problem here, of course, is if you're not sitting here ready and aiming at that hill the second those guys fire, you're never going to get a return shot at them. Because they only stay detected for a few seconds, and the second they fire, they instantly pull back into hard cover around the rocks. A problem that the Hellcat driver down there is all too aware of, and honestly, I mean, this is an incredibly brave move, because you do have to cross a bunch of open ground in order to get into a position where you can proximity spot those guys. And I thought the Hellcat driver was going to just drive up to the base of the ridge there and, well, dig in and proxy spot these fellas, but he appears to have chosen violence instead, possibly because he saw the artillery, but hey, it's working! He's drawn them all out of cover. Mega ATV lovers managed to nail one. But driving around in the open in front of three enemy tank destroyers, even if you are in a fast machine like the Hellcat, probably not the best choice. The scores are now 10 kills apiece, and the ARL, who is still alive, is absolutely not taking any prisoners. Step forward, today's second duty hero, the Stug. Oh, the ARL scene in... Oh, Mega ATV lover missed the shot, but everybody's waiting to spot this guy, and the Stug does the right thing. He digs himself in, right up against the base of the ridge there. The ARL cannot touch him. Not without poking out over the ridge, getting himself spotted, and instantly killed. And fortunately, the friendly T-67, who was spotting the southern flank, well, he spotted successfully, he found the Hellcat, <laughs> but he didn't survive the encounter. The enemy team are now ahead, once again, by one kill. There's the enemy M10. Good job, Stug, spotting him. Nice hit, not a kill. The enemy team really need to kill the Stug, because he's going to keep proxy spotting the tank destroyers on the hill. And the ARL decides that he's going to be the duty hero. I mean, this is a brave move, because he knows the Stug needs to die. We need to kill him before he... Come on, there it is. Right, again, scores are even. M10, proxy spot with Butch Stug, what are you doing? No, Stug, no, 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 just, oh no. You see, the problem with proximity detection is it works both ways. If you're close enough to spot them, they're close enough to spot you. And yeah, the enemy team do still have an AMX. who was just waiting for the Stug, who was spotted by the M10, to break cover and hammered him every step of the way. The enemy team have just widened their lead to two kills. And I don't think the artillery is going to survive this encounter for much longer, although maybe he can at least get one shot off. And that would be no. Mega ATV Lover is now the last tank left alive on the team against four enemies. So no Kolobanov's medal. There have to be five surviving enemies for that. So bit of a good news, bad news situation. He doesn't have the opportunity to get one of the rarest medals in the game, but, well, who wants to be the last one left alive against five enemies when you're on half health? And in an extremely thinly armoured tank destroyer. I mean, this thing's armour is bad even by tank destroyer standards. The Hellcat, who is down there somewhere, looks like a Tiger tank by comparison. Well, it's not quite that bad, but you get the idea. Now, what the enemy team need to do here is all rush him at the same time. If they do that, it's next to impossible for them to lose. 
because there's only one way up here. So the Hellcat, the M10 and the AMX could all muster at the ramp leading up to this hill. And once they're all there, you ready? Go! Now Mega ATV Lover's got a good gun, and he's probably going to kill one of them, but this gun has a 9 second reload, and there should be no way the two survivors cannot strip him of his remaining health in those 9 seconds. And they do all rush him at the same time. Unfortunately, the AMX thinks it's a good idea to stop and aim in front of a gun that can do 360 alpha damage. And then the M10 decides, yeah, I'll take my chances, <laughs> doing more or less exactly the same thing. That leaves the Hellcat, and he's firing gold. Unfortunately for the Hellcat, he's been firing gold the entire battle. And now he's run out, and he's having to use high explosive. And while the armor on this thing isn't that good, neither is Hellcat high explosive. <laughs> At least not from the front. Oh dear. Well, that came as a shock. <laughs> Seriously, guys, how do you screw that up? <laughs> With three of you, four if you count the artillery. Um, serious question here. How is it even possible for an M10 Hellcat and an AMX FL to, between the three of them, only do 200 damage to a Basotto? I mean, what were the odds of all three of them having sudden and fatal rushes of shit to the brain all at exactly the same time? I mean, the Hellcat didn't. He just spent all of his gold in the first half of the battle, even in only one shot and then a bunch of high explosive. So, you know, that was kind of his own fault. Oh, there's the artillery. 0.4 accuracy on this gun, by the way, which explains why that thing missed. But now he needs to reload before the RT. And while the reload on this thing isn't fantastic, it's definitely better than an M41. And there is the final kill and the victory for Mega ATV Lover 1 in the Italian Tier 6 tank destroyer, the Basotto. Ace tanker, high caliber, and top gun. One more kill, and he would have had a Radley Walters. Although one more kill at the end there, and he would have had a Kolobanov's medal. I'm just not sure he would have survived having to face five enemies. Although he shouldn't have survived facing four of them at the same time. The odds of... I mean, I suppose the odds of four enemies in close quarters having sudden and fatal rushes of shit to the brain aren't that much worse than three of them, and three of them just happened. So, hey, you never know your luck. Anyway, either way, an extremely creditable performance from Mega Ray TV Level 1 in the Italian Tier 6 tank destroyer, the M43 Basotto. I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.